once you've identified whether or not the species is an acid, a base, or a salt, um, the next, and if it's an acid, whether it's strong or weak, whether it's a base, if it's a base, whether it's strong or weak, and we've said if it's a salt, it's soluble, then it's time to work the problem. So how do you work the problem if you've identified that the, uh, what is the pH of problem is asking about an acid, and it's a strong acid. Well, it's a strong acid because that acid is 100% ionized, which means it produces H pluses 100%. So the concentration of H plus is the same as the concentration of the acid. Each strong acid produces 100% H pluses when it dissolves in water. So if it's a 0.1 molarity strong acid, that means it's 0.1 molarity H plus. If it's a 0.45 molarity acid, it means it's 0.45 molarity H plus. And we can calculate the pH because the pH is the negative log of the H plus. So bam, there's how you determine the pH of a strong acid. Similarly, if it's a strong base, you can determine what the pH is because a strong base is a metal hydroxide that dissolves in water. It breaks up into ions 100%. That's what makes it a strong base. It is ionized. Yep, it is 100% ionized and it's giving off OH minuses, hydroxide ions. That's what makes it a strong base. And so from the molarity of the strong base, you can get the molarity of the OH minus. For example, if it's sodium hydroxide, it produces one hydroxide ion when you dissolve it in water. So a 0.1 molarity of sodium hydroxide would be 0.1 molarity hydroxide ion. Uh, a 0.23 molarity lithium hydroxide would be 0.23 molarity hydroxide ion. And from that, I think it's easiest if you calculate the pOH, negative log of the OH minus concentration. And then from the pOH, you can get the pH. So it takes two steps to get there once you've got the hydroxide ion concentration. If it's a strong base dissolved in water that produces two hydroxide ions, like calcium hydroxide or very, very low molarities. Uh, the calcium hydroxide is considered slightly soluble in most tables. Same thing with magnesium hydroxide and barium hydroxide. Those are sort of on the edge. We'll talk about them more when we get to module eight. But if you've got very low concentrations and your problem says this is dissolved in water, this amount of barium hydroxide is dissolved in water, if that molarity of barium hydroxide is 0.01 molarity, the hydroxide ion concentration is actually 0.02 molarity because barium hydroxide has this formula. And when it breaks apart, you get the barium ion and two hydroxide ions. This is a Chem 1 concept. So if this is 0.01 molarity, then this will be 0.02 molarity once it dissolves. So that's how you're going to get the hydroxide ion concentration to get the pOH to get the pH. So be careful with bases that, um, that produce two hydroxide ions. You have to take that into account. All right. What if you have a weak acid? If you have a weak acid, it's considered weak because it's not 100% ionized. There is an equilibrium reaction, an equilibrium equation. And remember, for a weak acid, we can generalize it to that. There is an equilibrium reaction because it's not 100% ionized. You have this equilibrium reaction or equation, you have a Ka value, you have an equilibrium constant for that equilibrium reaction, which you can look up on the table. You need to almost always, almost 100% of the time, you're going to, it's going to involve an ice table unless you're just given equilibrium concentrations. Recall that from back in module five, unless you're just given equilibrium concentrations, you got to set up an ice table from that ice table, you will get the hydrogen ion concentration because it's that guy at equilibrium. And from that, you can calculate the pH. All right. If it's a weak base, 
it's weak because it's not 100% ionized, which means there's an equilibrium reaction. Remember, we can generically draw that equilibrium reaction as the base plus water is in equilibrium with that base acts like a bronsted lowry base by accepting an H plus from the water and you get the hydroxide ion. It is that hydroxide ion that makes it a base, the production of the hydroxide ion. Now, this is an equilibrium reaction for that weak base. There will be an equilibrium constant for it. We call that a KB. We have tables of those values. There will be an ice table, and from that ice table, you will get the hydroxide ion concentration. It's this OH minus at equilibrium. All right, that's an OH, it's hard to tell that. Let me fix it, all right. And then from the OH minus, you can get the POH, and from the POH, you can get the pH. So that's how you calculate what is the pH of if you've got a weak acid or a weak base. Very similar steps, but important to note, if it's a weak acid, there's gonna be an H plus in the product. If it's a weak base, there's going to be an OH minus in the product. If it's a weak acid, you'll have a Ka value. If it's a weak base, you'll have a Kb value. If it's a weak acid, that equilibrium X, typically it's X, will be the H plus. If it's a weak base, that equilibrium X will be OH minus. All right, let's next.